Hello, Geometry. Here we go with lesson four, where we're really going to start um, getting into area. Um, we're looking at areas of trapezoids, rhombuses, and kites today. Um, you're going to get a couple new formulas. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you some tips uh, when we get to the first practice problem. And I'm, I've said it already, but I'm going to make sure you really start to do it as we add more shapes. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you the um, formula for the area of a trapezoid. So the area is the height times base one plus base two divided by two. You might also see me write it one half H B one plus B two. Either one of those is fine. I mean the same thing. Now I'm gonna use this picture below here to um, basically justify the theorem. So let's uh, scroll down here a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll write it again real quick, just so we have it. So what we have in that picture is, this is the trapezoid I'm trying to find the area of. And what I've done is I've doubled it. So these two trapezoids are identical. And if you look at it and put them together, that makes a parallelogram. All right, so I'm now going to find the area of this parallelogram, which we've already talked about. What is the area of a parallelogram? It's base times height, right? Well, the height is just H, but the base, if you look at the base here, perpendicular, right? What is the length of that base? Because this is the height, so I need to look at that base. Well, it's the two bases of the trapezoids added together. So B2 plus B1 or, right, the base equals B1 plus B2. So when I plug that into the formula, I get the area of that parallelogram is H for the height, B1 plus B2 is the base, and that's the whole parallelogram. But I'm not doing the whole parallelogram. I'm only doing half of the parallelogram, right? Which is where the divide by two comes in. And there's my formula from that picture. Okay, so that might give you a little more um, understanding of where the formula came from. Um, you should know that part right there. The height is always perpendicular to the basis. I'm just gonna abbreviate that. Same as it was in parallelograms and triangles, okay? Now, like I said, first practice problem here, um, I'm going to give you a tip. Now, these are all trapezoids, so it's going to seem kind of redundant doing this, but on your test and quiz and upcoming SWIC, what you're going to have is you're going to have all the shapes kind of mixed together. So you're going to be using all these different formulas. So first thing I'm going to do is identify the shape. It's a trapezoid. Then I'm going to write down the formula. And then I'm going to look at the variables that I need. So H, B1, and B2. So I'm going to do that over here. H equals B1 equals B2 equals. When I have a number for all three of those things, I stop. Okay, so This one's pretty straightforward. All right, the first one is. But there's going to be some where they're not straightforward. And you're going to have to do some work. And you have to know when to stop or when to keep going. And so having this template, basically, of what I need and filling in those blanks will help you a lot. So I need H, B1, and B2. Well, B1 and B2 are the two bases that are parallel to each other. Um, so it'd be 20 and 25. The height is always perpendicular to the base. So you should look at that right angle. That's the 15. There is a number in here that means nothing. That doesn't help me in this problem at all. So we ignore it. Now I just plug stuff in. So the area equals 15 times 20 plus 25. The whole thing divided by 2. 20 plus 25 is 45. 15 times 45 is 675 divided by 2. Which is a decimal, but not a bad one. 337.5. Don't forget your label of centimeters squared. 
right? So that is a pretty basic one. Like I said, uh, they're going to get a little harder as we go. Second one is another trapezoid. Just going to st stay consistent here. All right, so H equals, B1 equals, B2 equals. What was I given? I was given both of the parallel sides. So that's base one is five, base two is seven. I don't have the height, but I have a 60 degree angle right there. That should be um, cluing you in right now. Should be. Drop that down. That dotted line is my height. And what that created was a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, what do I have there? I don't have anything for the hypotenuse, which is SP. I don't have the height. If I did, I wouldn't be doing this. So I should be able to get that side. And where do I get it? Well, when I dropped that down, I created a two portions of that seven. Well, I know that this is five down here. So what's left? Seven minus five is two. So this is two. And that's my short leg. So that's good. Short leg times radical three gives me my height. So my height is equal to two times radical three. So there's my height. I'm going to write it right here. Now I've got everything I need. I'm going to go to the formula. So the area equals two radical three times five plus seven divided by two. A couple different ways you could do this. I'm going to do the five plus seven is 12. So two radical three times 12 divided by two. So two radical three times 12 is 24 radical three divided by two. And then 24 divided by two is 12 radical three uh, meters squared. Okay. So you can see there's a little bit of work there that's required. Um, some are gonna have more than that. Some are gonna have less than that, but to keep it all straight, this can be very helpful. All right. Scroll down here a little bit. Number three and four. Get into a little bit more tricky stuff here. Again, trapezoid. So the area is the height. Add the two bases. Divide by two. All right. So what do I have? Of the three. Base one is five. I mean, it could be base two as well, but we're just going to call it five. I have the height is eight. Okay. Um, and then what we need to do is find the second base, which is everything over here, which we don't have right now. Okay. Um, so I've got, what do I have here? I've got this 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? Um, I can tell it's 45, 45, 90 because of those. That means they're equal. So that means they have to be 45. So if that's a 45, 45, 90, even though it doesn't look like one, I know that the legs are equal. So the height is one of the legs. This is also one of the legs. I don't really need to find this over here. I don't need that. You can find it. It's eight radical two, but I don't need it. Right? Get rid of that. So there's one. The middle section is five. It's a rectangle there, so that's pretty easy. It's the opposite sides equal. So eight and five. I need the last one. A lot of people think that this and this are equal. There's nothing on here that says that. So what do I do? Well, what else have I learned in this unit? That's eight. I've got Pythagorean theorem. So six squared. Oops, I just told you the answer. X squared, which is our missing side over here, plus eight squared equals 10 squared. So X squared plus 64 equals 100. X squared equals 36 and X equals six. Great. Now what do you do? Well, what do I do with six, five, and eight? Hopefully you catch that you should add those. Six plus five is 11. 11 plus eight is 19. Now I have that everything I need. Now I go to the formula. The area is equal to the height, which is eight. The two bases added up. 
and then divide by two. So eight times 24 divided by two. So eight times 24 is 192 divided by two is 96. squared. All right. Last one on the front here, and then we'll get to the next formula. Um, again, it is a trapezoid. I know this is this is, seems like it's not necessary right now, but when I mix in other shapes, you're going to like doing that. Or it's going to be helpful. Maybe you won't like it, but you'll it'll be helpful. All right, so what do I have here? I have X, 2X, I have a 14, and I have a 30. So 30 is one of the bases. Let's call it that one. I don't have the height or the other base. Okay. Um, what is that X and 2X doing? All right, well, that means I've got a 30, 60, 90. So that's a 90 degree there. If That means X plus 2X has to add up to... 90 has to. So that's 3x equals 90, x equals 30. So x equals 30, so that means this is a 30 degree angle, and this is a 60, and I've got a 30, 60, 90. What do I know in there? I got the hypotenuse is 14. Um, hopefully you get this quickly. Uh, divide by two, you get the short leg. So this is seven, and you get the height, which is seven radical three. Well, there's the height. I can write that down. Still don't have the other base down here. How am I going to get that? Well, if this is 7 and the whole thing is 30, what's left? This is 23, right? From here to here is 23, which means the opposite base is also 23. Now I've got everything I need. Let's plug them in. So 7 radical 3, 30 plus 23 divided by two. And I made this one kind of nasty on purpose. Um, you'll see what to do here in a little bit. 30 plus 23 is 53. 53 times seven, 371, radical three divided by two. 371 divided by two is not a good number. So I'm actually in simple radical form going to write that. That is my answer um, with inches squared. So that right there is my answer. Okay. All right. That's what an ugly answer looks like. All right. That's enough for trapezoids for right now. Let's move on to the next formula. You might be thinking, well, there should be three formulas because we're doing three shapes. But in fact, the area of a rhombus and the kite is the same formula. And that formula is a much simpler. It's one half D1, D2. D and the, both those Ds mean diagonals. Okay. Um, this kite, the blue kite there, um, is kind of like I did in the beginning with the trapezoid. I'm going to show you where the formula kind of comes from. And then um, the rhombus is the almost the exact same thing. So the green thing is a rectangle with side length D1 and D2. D1 is the side length, and D2 is the side length. Now, what do those side lengths come from? D2 is the same as the, this diagonal here. They're equal. D1 is the same as this diagonal here. All right. I just want you to see that. Um, so how do you find the area of the rectangle? It's just D1 times D2, right? The area of the kite... Well, if you look at, let's just look at one of these real quick. That rectangle there, the blue part is half of the green part. And that's the same thing here and here and here. So the area of the kite is half of the area of the rectangle. Which is where your formula comes from. Okay. Um, not really a proof, but just an explanation. These you'll find to be hopefully a little bit easier than trapezoids. 
Um, find the area of each kite and rhombus. Leave the answers in simplest radical form. I'm telling you A, B is equal to B, C, which is equal to C, D, which is equal to D, A, which means we've got a rhombus. So the formula is 1 half D, 1 D, 2. What's D1 and what's D2? If I have those two things, I can go to the formula. Well, I've got EC is 12. Is EA also 12? You should know by now that yes, it is because the diagonals of the rhombus bisect each other. So I know the diagonal one is 12 plus 12, which is 24. Don't multiply those, you add those. How do I get BE and ED? Well, do you remember in lesson four of unit eight, we talked about how the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So it's a rhombus, therefore the diagonals are perpendicular. So I can now use the Pythagorean theorem to find that 12 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. So 144 plus x squared equals 225. x squared equals 225 minus 144 is 81. Take the square root, I get x equals 9. Now, a lot of people are going to put 9 as my second diagonal. 9 is not the diagonal. 9 is just half of the diagonal. The whole diagonal is 18. So now I have what I need, 1 half 24 times 18. So 24 times 18 is 432 divided by 2 is 216 meters squared. Next one is, um, it looks like a kite. Is there anything that says that it's a kite? Yes, there is. Given KM is perpendicular to NL, they're perpendicular. Therefore, it's either a rhombus or a kite. And in this instance, it really doesn't matter. It's not a rhombus, though, because the diagonals did not bisect. But even if it was a rhombus, you would have the exact same formula. But it's not a rhombus. It's a kite. Um, the first diagonal, LN, is 3 plus 3, 6. The second diagonal, KM, is 2 plus 5, or 7. 6 times 7 is 42. Half of that is 21. As so you can see, it can be a little bit easier with rhombuses and kites. Last one is a little bit trickier. This time I gave you the perimeter of a shape. Hopefully you see that it is a rhombus because of the four congruent sides. Um, and I gave you a 30 degree angle. So that might help us, probably gonna help us. Uh, it's a rhombus, so the diagonals are perpendicular. So we'll put the right angle there. What does the perimeter help us with? Well, all four sides are the same. If they add up to 72, I can do 72 divided by four and get each side is 18. So now I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. with the hypotenuse of 18. Before I go any further, let's do the one half D1, D2. In this one, I gave you nothing. I didn't give you either one of the diagonals. You've got to find them both. Shouldn't be too hard. Um, that's the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90. Half of that would be the short leg, so that's nine. And then the hypotenuse would be nine radical, or sorry, the long leg would be nine radical three. Where do those show up on the rhombus? That's here and here. So that means this is nine, and that means that this is nine radical three. Nine plus nine is 18. Nine radical three plus nine radical three is 18 radical three. And there we go, We've got our two pieces. One half, 18 times 18 radical three. So 18 times 18 is 324 radical three. And then half of 324 is 162 radical 3 centimeters squared. Okay. And that is the areas of trape trapezoids, rhombuses, and kites. Uh, we're going to move on to regular polygons next.